What's up guys, Johnny here with Team Legit. Another exciting product for you guys today. Uh, this is a really new and cool uh, RC control product. It's gonna open up a whole world of different frequencies for a lot of you FPV pilots out there. It's gonna open up a lot of different worlds and uh, options for you guys for the mini quad racers and also for those long range guys. This is the new TBS Crossfire by Team Black Sheep. This is a new RC control system with a transmitter and receiver. Uh, it's designed for super long range. A lot of you guys may be thinking that this is on the 433 band, but it's not. This is actually a 900 megahertz for the USA guys or 816 megahertz for the international guys. This is a legal band to be using, so you don't need a UHF license or any kind of special licenses. Some countries may also uh, not allow different frequencies, but uh, this guy will open up a whole new world of options for you guys for those long range guys and for those mini quad guys or those guys that need that extra RC control they need that extra long range and they need that superb penetration so today we're going to do a quick unboxing and show you what comes inside all right so we've got the TBS crossfire here we're going to go get this box cracked open for you guys we actually received this uh, a couple weeks ago we're just getting around to doing the unboxing we plan to use this on a super long range aircraft and we're going to try to test its long range capabilities. First thing you see in the box is this really nice very compact transmitter here and this transmitter like I said transmits on the 800 and 900 megahertz band. It's a really nice very lightweight compact uh, transmitter. It's got heat sinks here. It's got a bunch of different labels here for different plugs. You've got a menu button here. We'll get more in, we'll get more into details about that and we've got a whole slew of connections underneath. The back side is nice and slick and we've got the SMA connector on the top. Next, you've got this cool little JR module style, or for those guys using the Tyrannus, a cool little connector that you can actually just clip into the back of your transmitter. It's got double stick tape on the back here, so what you'll basically do is pop that into your transmitter, line this up with the four little holes, and now you've got your transmitter module ready to plug in and plug out of your transmitter system. We've got a XT30 to a JST connector. This is for those guys running Spectrum or different radios that uh, need the external power. So you go ahead and plug the XT30 in there and you can use a separate battery. Next in the box we've got two antennas here. These are the uh, whip style antennas. Um, some may call them sander style, but these are the whip style antennas. Now these two with the right angle are for the actual receiver. For the transmitter we got a straight SMA whip. Underneath the little, the little uh, compartment here we've got a couple more wires. We've got the Futaba jack that goes into the bottom of the transmitter. So if you guys are running those Futaba transmitters, you can use the cable. You've also got a uh, another cable here with a three and a half millimeter plug. This will be for your Spectrum JR guys that use the trainer port. And lastly, you've got a blank lead here that just plugs right in there. And you've got the signal, PPM signal, the power, and the ground. Now this little guy can take a wide range of uh, power up from 2S up to I believe a 3 or 4S. We'll have to get the specifications for you guys. We got a little box here. Inside the box we've got a couple different things. First thing you'll see is the receiver module here. Now this is a 900 to 800 megahertz receiver module. The really cool thing about this receiver module, it's got the diversity set up here. Another really great feature is the internal battery. This receiver actually has a battery inside. And what that battery does is uh, when you connect this with the TBS Pro uh, core and you have the GPS installed, this thing has a two-way telemetry. So basically it will receive the RC signal and will also send out telemetry that is readable right to the back of the transmitter. But what the great thing about it is in case you go down in those cornfields or those high grass or tall, build, or tall, tall trees or you know the faraway mountains or whatnot, this guy will keep sending a ping of the last known coordinates to the actual transmitter. So if you crash and your battery gets ejected, the receiver will go ahead and throw you guys the last known coordinates. As you get closer and you regain control, it will tell you the last known coordinates right here on the actual transmitter. We got a little peripheral here that uh, I believe is for the uh, TBS Pro Core, the Core Pro. This is the little translator module that allow you to uh, plug into their BST or their bus. Uh, I believe it's an I2C connection. This is the little bus connector so you can plug different components in here, uh, current sensor, GPS, things like that. 
We've also got a little micro USB for programming and updating the receiver with different firmware and things like that. It is a uh, eight channel PWM receiver and it does also do PPM. So if you want to use the PPM outputs, you can go ahead and utilize those. All right guys, I've got the system here all connected and I wanna show you guys the power up sequence and different little things that this uh, system does. If you want to get in here close, we'll show you what it can do. All right, I've got mine set up here on a Spectrum DX18, but it works the same for all the other Spectrum radios. Uh, basically, you use the 3.5 millimeter jack into the trainer port. As you can see right here, I've actually tapped into the 2S LiPo on the DX18, and a lot of you guys that are running the DX8, DX9, and uh, DX7 have the uh, 2S LiPo that can power on your transmitter. Uh, most of you Tyrannus guys, the Tyrannus puts out 12 volts so you could just tap into the actual main control and you won't have to mess with this system. But I've just got the power pause, power lead coming off of my LiPo here and then when I ground it with the 3.5 millimeter jack, it activates the system and then it gets its PPM signal. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that in. As you can see, the transmitter has powered on and turned up. We've got a yellow status light, means it's waiting to connect. My transmitter is fired up, ready to uh, send the signals. So this model doesn't know what model I have here. So it's very important to select the model in your radio. And this goes for all radios that are putting out PPM. There is no model match. So you have to make sure you have the right model. So uh, now that the PPM signal is going out through here, it's being transmitted. Uh, let me show you a quick uh, close up of the different capabilities of this transmitter. Uh, as you can see here, it's got a little heads up display. First thing it tells you is the TBS Crossfire. It says link status connecting. It's waiting for the receiver to go ahead and connect. And then we've got uh, TX power, 100 milliwatts. So that means that this thing is putting out 100 milliwatts. And you can adjust the power of this transmitter. So if you're in a, a, a high noise area, you can up the milliwatts a little bit just to get that a little bit more power. Uh, but the less power consumption, you know, the more efficient this system runs. Next, we've got an RC link and a head tracker link. This particular transmitter has two different controls. So if you've got a two-man operation, or if you want to add head tracker to your system, you can plug that separately from your goggles, per se, or uh, if you have the separate gyro, right into the uh, head tracker link. And then lastly, we've got a uh, EXP port. I believe that's a... a, a uh, expansion port for later options and later different things that are coming uh, possibly for some telemetry on a laptop and other uh, really cool features as we go. So I'm going to show you quickly about the menu. So we'll go ahead and hold the menu down I believe for three seconds and it brings you into the little settings menu. The first option is set fail safe so you can go ahead and set your fail safes here uh, just before you take off or you know whatnot make sure you have your transmitter set to send the signal of RTH and different features or if you want your aircraft to loiter or hover or level out uh, whatever you want to set the fail safe this is where you would do it. Next option is binding you would go ahead and select this there is a uh, procedure to bind your transmitter in your manual. And lastly, we've got here the general setup. So if you go ahead and go to the general setup, you can switch between 915 megahertz and 868 megahertz. And you can actually do this while the system is powered on and while the system is being used. So if you're noticing any interference with the 900 megahertz system, you switch it over to 800 and it will just switch the receiver controller to 800 megahertz. Now 915 is what we would use here in the US and 868 would be for Europe. Uh, these are bands that are free to use and uh, you don't need any kind of special license or ham you know, restrictions or anything like that. Next, we've got the transmitter power outputs. So as you can see here, we've got uh, right now ours is set to 100 milliwatts, but uh, we can drop it down to 10 milliwatts, 25 milliwatts, 100 milliwatts, 500 milliwatts, 1 watt, and 2 watt. I don't know when you'll ever need 2 watts, but it's there for you to have. So we're going to go ahead and drop ours back down to 100 milliwatts for now. And next you've got the operator mode. Uh, this is for normal and then there's a couple other different little features here. For city mode, I mean if you're uh, tr in transmitting in high noise areas, it's got a little better filtration I believe. And normal. We're going to go ahead and leave ours for normal. Currently this model for the Spectrum radios has to go through the head tracker module. Uh, the actual RF or the RC module is not working. So check back within the next couple weeks for firmware updates. These are being corrected and they are being tested. Uh, please remember we do have an early release version here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the receiver here. And as I do that, you should see the green light on here go solid. There's a bunch of LEDs on the receiver and we'll talk a little bit more in detail about the receiver as well. So as you see, we've got a red light uh, on the receiver that shows that uh, we've got a link 
we've got a green light. The second green light is for the LiPo. There's a LiPo battery inside this receiver. Like I said, if it does go uh, down, it will keep pinging and sending the uh, GPS coordinates from the actual receiver uh, or the last known GPS coordinates. Say the battery gets ejected, you still know where it is. The next thing is the little status light here, as you can see. Uh, so this is now powered on, ready to go. As you can see, I've got RC control, just moving my aileron on my second channel. Back over here on the transmitter, we've got a green light saying that we've got the connection. And uh, there's a couple other features that activate once the receiver has made a connection with the transmitter. If you look over here, we've got RSSI signal strength, uh, range signal strength indicator, and as you can see, it's kind of fluctuating here in the house, but uh, majority of the time it's staying over the 100%. This is real-time telemetry data coming back and forth. The next little module over would give you your uh, latitude and longitude. Since we don't have the TBS Core Pro connected to it correct currently, we don't have those readings. And back to the main menu, the sig you know the link status and the signal status. All right, guys, not that you'll ever need to do this. I just want to show you the inside of the receiver module. As you can see, you've got your USB micro uh, FTDI cable here for firmware updates and expansions. If you guys check back in the links below, we'll have the... Uh, TBS agent, that's the little software that you would use to update the firmware, make setting adjustments, whatnot, and you can go through and calibrate it. You've also got the BST port here. This is the bus port. This is where the TBS Pro, uh, Pro would plug into to get your telemetry data. You've got your little bind button here. And underneath, as you can see, we've got our transmitter with the shielding and we've got our little lipo battery here this is the battery that's uh, used in case of a crash it continues to send the telemetry data back to your transmitter uh, like I said you guys should not have to ever open this up but I did want to give you guys a quick uh, show of what it looks like inside alright guys so the TBS Crossfire is a two-way telemetry receiver currently the TBS Pro Core Pro right now is the only re uh, OSD that is compatible with sending the telemetry data. It is compatible with all other OSDs. It can work with everything else, uh, including the Eagle Tree Vector. We're currently in talks with uh, Eagle Tree, TBS, and Team Legit have been communicating, and we've been working on trying to come up with a solution to where we can make a connector. So those guys like us have fallen in love with that Eagle Tree Vector. You can plug it right into the uh, TBS BST port, and we can get the RSSI and the telemetry data uh, streaming down to your uh, TBS Crossfire transmitter. Alright guys, there's your first look at the TBS Crossfire. It's got uh, a lot of really cool functions and we're going to put that to the test. In the next couple weeks we've got an aircraft we're building. We're going to try to get as far away as possible. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a one-way mission, but hopefully uh, it's not. We're uh, planning to hit 30 to 40 miles with this system. Now Trappy has been testing the system out over in Europe and things like that and he's been getting quite a bit of range on the 10 milliwatt power. So we're going to go ahead and give it uh, real live scenarios and we're going to put it through its paces. If you guys like seeing these really cool products, don't forget to click the like button. To stay up to date with the latest and greatest in FPV, don't hit, forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, we've got a lot of really cool things coming up this year. We've got a lot of new products that we're ready to review, and we'll bring those to you guys as soon as we have the availability. Most of the time, we like to put things through its test. Uh, to check out the TBS Crossfire, you can go to tbs.com. <clears throat> we'll also have it available on our store. I'll put links in the description below. And as always, I'm Johnny with Team Legit. If you got any questions, don't forget to leave that in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Upgraded. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. I thought there were, I don't know why in my head I thought Dominator V3 as in HD V3. So it's going to be Dominator V3 and Dominator HD V2. Yeah. Okay, so it's just wider. Yeah, it's 16.9 screen. Okay, and it does HD as well? Exactly. Because I'm seeing AV2D. Uh, let me display. AV 3D, okay. So this is basically the V2 upgraded with K2. 